What is a blackout or cell phone free vacation? Hey, this is Justin Hit from Prosperity Homestead. Many of the subscribers to this newsletter move to a small farm, homestead, or estate to get away from the big city, to get quiet, peace, and really reconnect with the land. They are interested in healthy habits, and they want to either grow their own food or start transitioning to their retirement where they have just a peaceful place. In fact, many of my subscribers will start with just a cabin out on the woods. They'll buy a piece of property, put a little small little hunting cabin out there, maybe spend the weekends there. Others are keeping in the family a historic home. So for example, their parents lived in this home, their grandparents lived in this home, and now they want to live in this home and keep this home in the family, keep it well-maintained, keep that legacy alive. Another subscriber has a a house on the lake. It's a very modest house, but the whole family gets there, gets together there once a year, and they have this joy and excitement, this getaway. But now what if you don't have any of these things? What if you're in a situation where you're working full time and you're maintaining a household and you don't yet have your small farm, your homestead or estate? Maybe you don't even have a little vacation house or a timeshare or something that you can just get away. What do you do? Well, it has been the desire of many subscribers to just simply disconnect from society disconnect from the cell phone, go off on a vacation where their work can't call them in and ask questions, where they can get away and just go fishing. That's it. They just want to sleep and go fishing. Maybe they want to go on a golf outing and they don't want to be reached by anybody. They don't want, they want to go to a course that's just them and their golf game. They don't want to go to a busy place. They don't want to go to a place that has zero amenities but they want to just get out there. So there's these places called – they're called black site or they're called cell phone free. And in the permaculture community, this might mean, for example, uh, wolfing where you go volunteer on a farm. And I didn't even mention this. Some subscribers want, to, want the experience of farming but they don't want to own the farm and have all the risk. But you volunteer on a farm. You go farm the farm for a week or two weeks. There's no cell phones. There's nothing. It's just you and the farming. Uh, and, and it's kind of a – a relief. There's also nice, really nice resorts that you can go to where there's no cell phones, there's no interruptions, nobody even knows you're there. And in fact, with all this COVID activity, some of these places even offer complete isolation. Now, this sounds a little strange, and maybe I should have set this up up front, but all throughout history, smart people, affluent people, high earning people, people who are in high stress situations, have always just gone off to a cave and prayed or, or gone off to a spa and spent the weekend there or gone off to the hot springs. In ancient times, uh, philosophers would go to a cave and they would just sit and think and read. Uh, in European age, uh, during the medieval time and a little bit after that during the Renaissance, it was customary to go for the weekend to a monastery and just spend the weekend with nothing, just focusing on you and your thoughts. And, and that's something that can happen today. And I'll give you a list of a few places you can go. Now, I'm not going to give you specific places because any one of these places that would be – if it became popular would not be secluded. So so one example is the nice resort off-season. So you find your favorite resort and instead of going there peak season, you go there off-season. You're going to get a little better of attention. There might not be as many amenities, but if you are, are self-directed in your plan – You'll certainly enjoy that. Um, there's a lot of hunting preserves. If you're into the outdoors, there are hunting preserves where you can go there with a small group and actually be anonymous in that group and go hunting, enjoy yourself. You could organize a group of your friends and go there, but these locations usually don't have cell phone access or they recommend you not take your cell phone. Um, you, it, there is a little bit of a psychological disconnect when you take when you turn off that cell phone for a weekend or a week long. Um, but if you if you have that challenge of turning it off, you can actually join a survival class. There are primitive survival classes that you can join, and you don't get to take a cell phone. In fact, all you get is the clothes on your back and a pocket knife. And they take you out, and you learn how to survive, and you eat eat from the wilderness, and it's it's a challenge to your physical strength. And during Roman times, uh, there there were affluent individuals who would often uh, dress as a beggar 
and just basically live homeless, live rough for a couple of days to to appreciate their situation. Now, I'm I'm sharing a wide spectrum here because I've got a wide spectrum of questions. Ultimately, you need to decide what you want to do. But it might mean taking your family to a second tier resort rather than Disney. It might mean Disney off season. It might mean Disney vacation package that allows you to stay in a, in a not a hotel but stay inside of a a bungalow or something like that. It really depends on what you're looking for. But to get the most from a blackout or a cell phone free holiday, the first thing you need to know is is just leave the phone at home. Okay, your cell phone, your mobile device, that is how people are reaching you. Second is you don't have to tell your work where you're going. You can prepare two or three weeks in advance and say, look, we're having this holiday vacation and we're going to go and we're going to have a good time, but I'm going to be unavailable. If your work says, oh, no, you've got to be available, there's something wrong. Okay, this, you know, it's, it's not a vacation if you can't vacation. Another thing you can do, too, is go to a relative's house. Um, it is really important these days, especially with your older relatives, to go ahead and while they're alive – uh, get the grandkids to meet them. Uh, get Take your children to meet them. Make sure everybody's being able to connect. Share the family history. Start building a tradition of that family get-together. Uh, there are other opportunities. I did mention wolfing, but there are – where you might be sleeping in a tent, working on a farm. That's exciting for some. But there's also opportunities where you can be a guest tenement on an estate or at a, a larger home. So, for example, there's something called uh, chateau living. And there are chateaus in, Fran- in France where you can go there and stay in a small house on, on the uh, – p- the, I don't want to say plantation but on the estate and you can enjoy wine and fine foods all prepared and eat at the house. You can wander the estate and enjoy and take in that breathtaking uh, view. There are a few countries in Europe right now that are having trouble – uh, keeping their cities full because all the young people moved out of the city. So you can actually Airbnb into a uh, thousand year old uh, housing arrangements and you can go there and there's very few people and it's very quiet and it's very rustic, but you're going to get excellent food. You're going to get excellent experience. What could be more refreshing than you and your loved ones going somewhere and having no interruptions? No television talk calling out to you, no social media, no uh, constant news cycles drilling away at you where you can really truly reflect and understand. Now, if you're progressing with the principles that we teach with with Prosperity Homestead, you might even have one of these on your own property. So sometimes, and I, I kind of have this open agreement with the neighbors, is if, I've, if I'm laying out in the yard for more than an hour, call of medical services. But if I'm just out there for an hour, it's okay. Because sometimes I'll just go sit in my garden. So there's not really any gardening to do. I might go out there and sit in the garden, enjoy that warm sun, uh, maybe nibble on some vegetables here and there. But ultimately, I'm just relaxing. When Zola was alive, uh, Zola and I would sit out in the garden and I just rubber belly. Zola's a dog, by the way, um, a little 25 pound dog. I would just rubber belly and we'd chill out in the sun and she'd chew on vegetables and stuff. But if you don't have that at your home, you don't have this quiet place. If you're a religious person, it might be a prayer closet. It might be a meditation room if you're into yoga or exercise. Uh, it might be a, a, a karate studio or a boxing ring that you have nearby. It's very important to have that getaway, that blackout, that that really um, just disconnect. Go to the most primitive and most secluded way of just getting back into your mind and identifying where you want to go and what do you want to be and where do you want to where do you want to expand your life. And if you can't do it on your own home, the there are resorts and getaways that you can go to, and they don't have to cost very much. In fact, a a uh, a wolfing situation where you go work on somebody's farm doesn't cost anything. So think about this: you want a small farm, a homestead, or an estate? You can actually have that experience today while helping a farmer, while being a guest, while enjoying the way life might be in your future, but doing it today. 
And even with COVID, you can do this. There are many places that have only one or two guests in, in the off season. They might have five or six guests. Uh, many of the small beds and breakfasts around Martinsville area, uh, they only have four or five rooms available. So you can go there. You can relax. You can have peace and quiet. You can step away from society and the, uh, the hustle and bustle every day to even see if you can, t- you can handle it. I warn you, a lot of people just turning off their cell phone for the weekend, they can't handle it. They freak out. They're like, how will people reach me? You know, how will I, how will I call somebody? The phone's not broken. You can call somebody if there's an emergency, but do you really need people to call you all weekend? Could you have made those calls during the week? So to, to leave you with this, it, it, there is value in being a contrarian. There is value in setting aside a moment of time where you have no interruptions, where you simply disconnect from everything and, and reconnect with nature. And there's values, uh, including reductions of stress, improvement of sleep, uh, improvement of mental state of simply just going the, to the most primitive settings. A friend of mine was telling me about their, their rustic hunting cabin. They l- drive for miles up into the mountains. They go to this cabin that has no electricity. It has a composting toilet. It has a wood stove. It has a small table and a bunk bed. And th- this gentleman and his son and sometimes friends of the family will go there and they will just all weekend hunt. Now, they don't always get anything. And they, they, they mostly spend a lot of their time sitting around the campfire and enjoying conversation, but they always seem like they're at a different level when they return. They're at a, a newfound joy and relaxation that they're, they're not going to get otherwise. So again, the concept of blackout means basically you shut down all electronics. Um, you shut down all media. You don't even care what day of the week it is. You don't care what time it is. And you just simply live connected with nature. The concept of getaway is that you step away from what you're doing today, either to experience what you want in the future or to challenge your current living position. Um, could you go a whole weekend with home cooked meals where you only prepare, the only thing you eat is what you've prepared? Uh, can you go and do arduous labor at a farm or at a volunteer organization uh, without any distractions from your previous life? These are mental challenges that really help you get more from your small farm, homestead, or estate and helps you get something from those concepts without actually owning those concepts because you can live in an apartment in New York City and go out in the countryside and experience country and see if it's something that you'd want to do for the long run. And you can do it in such a way without distraction, just simply looking for a blackout site or a, uh, a, a getaway, a private getaway. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. Part of Prosperity Homestead is helping you get to the mental state of freedom, liberty, and food sustainability, of being able to have a more healthy lifestyle, and being able to have better quality in your human relationships. Now, in fact, this could be relationships all around the board, but uh, human relationships primarily, that intellectual conversational relationship. And it really could be for some being able to sit out on the front porch without worry of disrupt disruption and having a glass of iced tea. And for others, it may be in a large, palatial estate and having someone wait on them all weekend uh, rather than them uh, slaving over themselves doing uh, the things that must be done. You decide. But the key is with the tips I gave you today, you you can do this. There's no budget constraints. There's no concerns. You can do it within your means today. And when you do it, it's, it's going to uh, transform your feeling. It's got to open your mind up. You're going to learn something about your family members, and it will be a wonderful experience. If you have any questions about what we cover here at Prosperity Homestead, visit me at www.prosperityhomestead.org. I'm a permaculture design consultant. My name's Justin Hitt, and I help others uh, achieve their dreams with that uh, holistic lifestyle in a small farm, homestead, or estate. Thanks for listening.